Um, I thought we had some great fights tonight. I think the main event was an amazing fight, a great uh, striking war, actually. And, uh, and I think DC showed his dominance. And overall, we have uh, some great talent <coughs> in the UFC. Very proud of that. And at this point, uh, let's just open it up for questions. If you guys have a question, just raise your hand. Scott will point you out and stand up and fight the season. Got a few questions for Daniel. Yep. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then you laid out a few things after the fight. Um, just to be clear, all this is just things that you want. This is nothing that has been signed to. Nothing no, to. nothing been signed. This is just what I said in my ideal universe. That's what would happen as this year goes on. But I mean, it's good. You know, it could not happen. But if it doesn't, you know, I'll just keep on plugging away. I know that you're a fighter and you have to wait to you know, see what the UFC wants to do as a promotion, but are you hopeful I mean, that that makes sense and that you, you don't see any roadblocks that you're facing for any man able? I mean, I don't know why. I mean, most of the other guys are tied up. You know, everybody's pretty much scheduled in the division. Um, so why not? You know, we were supposed to fight already. You know, it's a, it's a good fight. I think people would watch the fight. And, uh, you know, we could, we, could, we could sell the fight, Frank and I. You know, so we, we'd all make some money. What, if you had to venture a guess, what do you think you'd weigh against Frank Mir in a heavyweight fight? You seem to be trending down. I don't know. No idea. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I just wait to the weigh ins just like every time, right? Is, is, is 205 something that obviously it is on your mind because you brought in John Jones? Is that in your mind to kind of continue to lose weight, though? Or is it just 230 where you might want to stay at? At heavyweight, that's about as light as you want to go facing bigger guys. No, I mean, I'd, I'd fight big guys at 225, 227. Uh, I feel like I'm getting faster as I go down, and, and uh, my speed's a little better. Um, if you notice, when I started to go around Dion on the ground, I was a lot faster than him, so I was able to get my punches off better. Uh, on the feet, I was a lot faster than him, so I don't think it's, a, it's that big a deal because I can wrestle, you know, and I can wrestle at the level that I wrestled. So um, I once wrestled in the... Uh, Dave Schultz Memorial Tournament, I wrestled two, I weighed about 230, and I beat the number one, two, and three guys in the United States. So, I mean, if I have to fight bigger guys, it, it won't really affect me that much, I don't think. And I'm sorry to ask you a bunch of theoretical questions, but if for whatever reason in here, the fight didn't happen, would you be able to maybe consider going at 205 right away, or no. is your next fight 100% no. got to be an enemy? No, if I, uh, the reason I said that... <laughs> I would fight him in the fall is because I would need some time to actually get that weight down. I mean, I'm comfortable at 230 right now, but that's still 25 more pounds. So I would need some time to to, to make weight. You know, and I don't want to fight at 205 because I don't want to fight Dan Henderson. No way. <laughs> no way. He's hanging around here somewhere. I don't want to fight Dan Henderson. For the record, Brian Grab, you know why. <laughs> I kind of got a man crush on Dan Henderson, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got one more question for you. So far, um, yeah. You know, coming into this fight, it seemed like you yourself and then a lot of the media were kind of painted as a no-win situation. Whatever you did wouldn't be good enough. And now that the fight's over and you know what happened, can you take anything from this? Or was this just, uh, you know, get, get through this business and then move on to, to what's, what's next? Well, you know what I take from this fight is that when everybody was looking past him, I was able to, to keep my focus on taking care of tonight, you know, and not looking at the bigger picture. A lot of times I was, you know, Twitter people have such direct access to you that you can get their opinions straight on. You know, and I got a lot of, uh, you're looking past this guy into the UFC and everything, when in reality I wasn't. I was just answering a lot of the questions that were asked of me. And uh, I take that even in a situation where most people around me may not think there's much to gain. I can maintain complete focus on that task and get through it and, and uh, get through it healthy and, and put on a pretty good performance. No? Right. <laughs> Scott, you know, obviously now that this is all over, can you kind of take us through some of the things that were going through your head as you're sitting there cage side watching this all progress, you know, kind of watching the end of your baby, so to yeah, speak? Yeah, I mean, you know, to me it's um, something that, uh, you know, it's a bittersweet moment, but... You know, I had already accepted in my mind that it was going to be time, and this was the last fight, and uh, and that was going to be it. And that's the reality. So, uh, Strike Force has had a great run, and I'm glad we're here with these fighters today to finish it uh, off in a, in, a, in a good in a good run in a good light. And uh, you know, Daniel was a guy. Where's Bob? Is Bob Cook here? 
So Bob Cook, he's he's responsible for, Dan, for Daniel bringing him to me. We met in San Jose at a, at a, a little restaurant, and and, uh, and we were talking, and I'm like, God, you know, is is he is he more than just a wrestler, Bob? And they started talking, and I said, God, this guy can really talk. He sure likes to talk a lot. So <laughs> maybe there's some hope here because you know, in Strike Force, we like to fight fighters that were that had personality, that had the X factor, and, and I think that Daniel, you know, just struck uh, stuck out of my mind. And then we hit a little rope bump when he said, you know, how much he wanted. And I said, what? How much for the first fight? <laughs> but, you know, we got over that hump, and, and we believed in Daniel from the beginning. And, um, you know, you guys, are, I don't know if you remember, but he was the third alternate on our tournament. Yep. The great tournament we threw in the beginning <coughs> of, I think, 2000, uh, was it 2011? 2010, 11? Then, But Daniel wasn't even the first, the first alternate. It was Chad, Chad Griggs and Shane Del Rosario. Under Rosario, we're the first two alternates, and then I said, "Wait, let's let's get Daniel." And then you know he fought a couple of fights, and then when he fought Jeff Munson, I was like, "Wow, who is this kickboxer here?" I mean, I, I didn't even recognize him. So I knew he's getting better. He's in a great gym. He's doing his thing, and you know what? He he is going to do some serious damage uh, at the UFC. I'm looking forward to seeing him fight as a fan, and I'll be rooting for you. And uh, and and Jacare, he's another fighter we fought from Japan, actually fighting. Uh, for Pride back in the day, I believe Sengoku was where he was fighting. But, um, you know, I had always heard of Jock Ray from... Dream. Dream, Dream sorry. Dream. That's where I was, Dream. It's been a long day. But, um, you know, I'd always heard of Jock Ray being the jiu-jitsu master, and I watched him in his fights, and he uh, he grappled with Randy Couture in a, uh, in a, in a uh, just a, just a match. And uh, I kept hearing his name over and over and over, and so finally I saw him fight. And, uh, again, another great character. And, and uh, Jacques Ray, I know you're going to do great things over at the USC. I have a lot of confidence in you guys. So thank you for fighting the strike course. And Gegard, hey, Nate's here. How are you? So, so Gegard Musashi, another fighter that uh, came from Dream and part of the uh, the Japanese uh, fighting uh, you know system they had going over there. And um, I always like Gegard. I always believe in Gegard. And uh, again, I wish you a lot of luck in UFC. And uh, Go kick some ass over there. Nate and Tarek had a tough fight. I don't see if Tarek is here. Okay. Had a tough fight. Uh, and um, you know what? I told the reporter yesterday, I said, it's going to, you know, Nate's going to try to get Tarek on the ground. Otherwise, it's going to be a stand up fight. And then it's going to be a really tough, tough fight. And, and that's what I turned out to be. So, Nate, thank you for fighting our main event. And uh, Ryan. Ryan's a kid I met up in Washington, probably what, five years ago? Maybe five, six, six years ago, maybe. And uh, I said, hey, Ryan, do you, do you want to fight in MMA? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to go train my dad for a while. He's living in Seattle. We live him at a Starbucks up in uh, Bellevue. In Bellevue. And so uh, just kept tabs, tips, tabs. And when I, when I knew he was going to train seriously, uh, I, I sat down with his manager, Sam, and we cut a deal. And congratulations on a big win. Thank you. And uh, I wish you luck in the future fighting the UFC. So did, I, was that, did that take too long? No. Okay, there you go. We're, we're used to this with you by now. Well, as you're sitting there watching, okay. obviously, the, the first four fights, yeah. is there part of you that's going, oh, man, thank God, this is a great, you know, fan-friendly stoppage in the last show on Showtime, not have, you know, several unfan-friendly fights, you know, on the last Well, you know, the it's, it's the first time they actually had me, like, tweeting tonight, right? So mm -hmm. um, I, I, was, I was going crazy trying to tweet them, look at the fights and tweet them. <coughs> <laughs> so it was uh, it was interesting, but you know what? And then trying to keep score with the Niners and see what's going on with the San Francisco Forty Niners and go back and forth. But no, on a, on a serious note, it was uh, you know like I said, it's an honor for these guys to fight and to have me see watch these guys fight. And you know what? I'm proud of what we accomplished. We had a great staff. I'd like to thank Silicon Valley Sports Entertainment for believing in Strike Force. Greg Jameson, Jim Goddard, Charlie Foss, Steve Kersner, and they made all this happen. Showtime. Without Showtime, we really just, just would have stayed a, a regional promotion. So, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful to them. They believed in us. And I think we did a lot of great stuff together. Uh, Daniel, uh, the, the thing I want to ask you is uh, tonight, uh, how was the, the game plan? How did that go? Because I, I saw a couple of times it looked like you were trying to go for submissions, possibly. Um, but it looked like you were very comfortable on the ground, obviously. You're a wrestler. But uh, what, what was the game plan, and how did it turn out? Well, I think it kind of went exactly like we thought. You know, I was going to stand with him a little bit, but I wanted to wrestle him to, to get him tired. You know, I've got a, I've got a great jiu-jitsu coach now, Leandro Vera, and he works with me. And 
you know, we grapple. He's been